Um, was launched from there. Yeah. Interestingly, all the girls in that photo were from Upton and around this area. So you are getting quite a representation there. Yeah, they're, they're, that group's increasing week by week. It's, it's, it's brilliant. I can't begin to tell you the good work that's going on there. Um, there is a concession pass. It's called My Ticket. It's £2. Or oh, maybe £2.10 now, but I know that a lot of uh, our youth are, are using it to a great extent. They're using yeah. it to get to the youth zone. They're also using it to, to get to other youth facilities. Got to be mindful that you're not the only. You may be the best, but you're not the only. We're youth not. We're not. The, we're not saying we're the best. No, no you're not. There's been, <laughs> a, there's, been a, there's been a suggestion. Yes. That, there's been a suggestion that maybe some young people aren't coming to you because you know they don't like Birkenhead. That may indeed be true. But some of them do have loyalty to their own youth centres. Exactly. But we're so, not. Yes. Of which there's a number that exists. Like, it's just impression that they brief. don't. They do. A number do exist. Not being brief. Yeah. Yeah, we're not we're not here to try and take people away from other other activities so at all. My concern is what I've heard is that when you're making contact with these people and saying, "Have you considered coming to our club?" If they've said, "No, I don't like Birkenhead," or given a different reason, are you able to direct them to their local youth centre? Have you been doing that? Where possible, yeah. Where possible. Yeah. I mean, we're we're absolutely not about taking trying to take young people away from other provision. You know, we're looking to engage young people who aren't engaged in any positive activity. Or, you know, young people might belong to another youth group that's open one or two nights a week. So carry on going there. You've got the strong relationships with workers there. But you might want to come to us a different night of the week, once a month, and uh, use some of the um, facilities that you can't use somewhere else or engage with one of our more specific projects. So, you know, at the moment we're, we're running... Um, financial management um, mentoring program for young people, so real basics um, that's very, very specific. So it's about working alongside other groups completely. Would you do outreach in some of the centres that are already yeah, open? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's a good question. Just would you... a question. You, you've got some pushback from the member of the audience who would like to get to community question time. Yeah. So, um, I think the high is brilliant, and I think what you do is wonderful, and I don't want to disrespect that, but I do think we need to move on. So, um, thank you very much for coming this evening. Thank you for presenting. Before we get to community question time, we have a member of the community with an important message. That's Susan. Chairman of the Real Society of Arts and member of the Creative Community. I'm going to start very negative and end up very positive, so please bear with me. Uh, I live and work on the rural. I'm going to Oh, very well. Susan, would you like to go with Um, okay. I'm going to bring this with me. Yeah. David, do you mind if I stick that in front of you? Okay. Okay. Um, I've been asked to work with the libraries. I have found the staff feel very undervalued to the point of being demoralized. Um, Librarians need a degree to be a librarian, right? Okay. Um, and they're now not able to be called librarians. They're called customer representatives. Uh, they find out on a Thursday where they're going to be working the following week. This not only impacts on them personally, but also professionally. If I go in and ask, are there brochure stands? They'll say, I haven't been here for three weeks. I don't know everything's been moved around. Um, they are discouraged from having anything more than four days consecutive leave at any one time. It's very difficult, it really is. And for heaven's sakes, they're not allowed to be sick. Um, I'm not getting at the library service. They are working as hard as they can and is doing their best with the limited resources they've been able to get. Um, and therefore, the libraries need additional income streams. If you visit them, you'll find beautiful buildings with a lot of capability for additional income streams. A lot of the library staff and the friends of the libraries have very good ideas on how they can create these. But before we do this, we have to increase footfall. I did a quick survey of 100 people and asked why they weren't using their local library. And mostly, it's because they don't know when they're open. The opening hours are so erratic that they're not sure. This didn't surprise the library staff at all. Also, a third of the population in the world don't have computers in their homes. We have very expensive equipment sitting in the libraries waiting to be used, but how do people find out when they're available for use? So, how do we remedy this? We've 
devised a troll trail. And if I can ask Jackie, can you take one of those and then pass it along? Okay. In partnership. Sorry? Keep it very quick. Yeah, I'm doing. In partnership with the Festival First. Um, so they're helping with advertising and it helps spread the festival and the troll trail throughout the borough. Trolls are part of our Viking heritage. No one knows what one looks like, and they can be made of anything in any size. So we're asking people to make trolls and take them to their local library, where they have to find out what hours they're open in order to do that, um, between now and the 1st of June. I then will pick them up, see what we have. We've devised a brochure that will have the library's opening hours and the addresses and the troll trail information. People will go around to the different libraries to find the trolls, and then we'll put their completed troll trail um, leaflet in the box in the library. Okay. Um, there's a small prize from each library um, from when they draw the um, the brochures, the troll trail leaflets, and also a prize for the best, the most beautiful, and the most horrible. We've gotten prizes from Cassart for the 22 libraries, and Oxton Books have contributed the three for the for the for the um, the top prizes. Um, what I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to give you each a piece of salt dough, and I'm going to ask you to either create your own troll or get someone to do it for you, and then please go into your local library, take your troll in, have a look at the library building, because most of them are such a wonderful asset. Speak to the people that are there about the income streams that are possible, and you'd be surprised how much money we can make to support the libraries just by getting football and income streams in. Okay? okay. Thanks very much. Yeah. Can, so, I, can I just very briefly come in on that? <laughs> I thought you might want to because libraries are close to our heart. Well, they, they are. Well, we are in Pemsby, yeah. Thank well, you. They are in and thanks for that. Um, Pemsby Library is now open, and, and the, library, the library hours have been reduced. Again, because of cuts, we haven't, we, and I'm very proud of this, we haven't closed one single, and there's 24 libraries in Wirral, not 22. No, there's two that have closed, but for any renovations, not for any other. Yeah, the, well, there's 24 libraries in Wirral, and we haven't closed any. Here in Pemsby, our library now, with volunteers, everything we've talked about tonight, everything Matthew was talking about tonight, we've got nearly 30 volunteers working in Pemsby Library here doing tremendous work. We've got a group of knitters who were in 15 ladies knitting trolls. So we're well ahead of this in Pensby Library. The volunteers in Pensby Library have raised over a thousand pounds since we started, which is all going back into the library. So our library's open longer now than it was before the cuts. Um, so it's good news with the libraries. And we should, we, took, we should take great pleasure in our libraries. And I personally think any closure of a library is an act of vandalism. Um, so we, are, we as a council are working very, very hard. And I personally, as the local councillor here, I'll do, I'm doing 20 hours in our, in our library. Okay, um, and the footfall here in Panic, this is an advert for Pendy Chair, so you must forgive me. Yeah. Um, the work that's going on in Pent, we've got a choir, we're having oh, walking oh, for oh, health, oh, oh, knitting, we, we value, art, we, in we fact we've got an art. library in and the libraries in all thank our you, communities, chair. but thank you very much. Thank you, I, uh, I'm looking forward to the troll which is emerging in Greasby as we speak. So, they're all on Facebook. We, we, we come to the community question time. We have had community questions as we've gone along on various topics, have we not? And we have received an inordinate number of questions, which we shall not be able to answer all of them. Can I ask, well, even if we had all the evening just to one topic, we would never be able to answer all the questions. However, I can see one hand there, and need to let you ask your question. Is it one of the ones on my list? Uh, no, it's not, Madam Chairman, but I would like to just say, um, if we could possibly have it mitigate that the residents of Heron Road, of which there are many here tonight, uh, are now to be recognised as the friends of Heron Road. And we'd just like to thank Jackie there for her assistance in that. But to take it a stage further, 
we'd just like to put it on record to the council that we're still very keen to have the full council plans for Heron Road to be implemented as soon as there is sufficient funding. But in the short term, we like three things. The first being a static camera halfway down Heron Road. The second being a mirror just opposite Acres Road to make it much safer for the residents to come out. It's, it's a death trap. And the final thing is a, a no entry sign at the Hoy Lake end yep. by the roundabout to stop people coming the wrong way around the roundabout. And if I can just briefly point out one thing, you all agreed the minutes of the meeting, they weren't correct. Um, if I can just say, Council Green requested that an option report be prepared to re in relation to Heron Road for consideration by the committee. That wasn't what was stated. If you remember, and I'll quote, Jeff Green said, I'd like the road safety officer to go away and come back in March and tell us what he's going to do about Heron Road. And he's not here tonight. And that wasn't yeah. in the minutes. Okay. Um. <coughs> Just to say that the gentleman is exactly right. That was the minute. Um, the, the road safety officer can't come this evening. I have spoken to him very briefly. Just in respect to those comment, those things you asked for, he's had discussions with the police about a static speed camera. The police have said that it, it won't work in that location in the middle where most of the accidents happen because of the bends in the road. Um, what what the, what the road safety is going to press the police to do is to do mobile traffic enforcement at the part nearer to Mel's. Um, in terms of the no entry signs, I said I, I got the. Um, writing on the road replaced, which I gather has helped a bit. I'm told the price to put in illuminated no entry signs is three to four thousand pounds. The first um, the first place to look for funding for that would be the constituency committee. If the constituency committee haven't got any funding, I, I'm not, not sure whether you have or not, then I will undertake to go in and try and find some funding from somewhere else. The mirror is a new one, but I'll take that away as well. We've had okay, two accidents you. in the last two weeks. All right. But we also had, the road was closed seven times last year, and the police, the official line from the police is, nobody's been killed yet. Now, how long do we have to wait? It's ridiculous. I, I hear your frustration, we've, we've, thank you. We've got more or less the same amount of traffic on a B road now, Erin Road, mm. than we have on the main road through to mm. Moor. Yeah, and we've got that all noted down, and you'll be looking at the minutes carefully, I can tell. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah just to change the subject. Um, and before I ask this question, and before anyone starts to pick fault with it, I've got documented proof here with me tonight, which I can't show you. It goes to the press first, and it will go to the radio. This is the question. Why are Labour councillors not allowed to answer their constituents on questions involving Whittle Grove Company, Band H Houses, and the Hoylake Golf Resort? Has their leader gagged them? and threaten them with expulsion if they do. And remember, I've got the documentation to prove it. Happy to answer that one immediately, yeah, that helped, it's helpful, Wendy. Yeah, that would be very helpful for you, um, Ask me any question about the golf resort, or I will answer it. We have not been gagged. That seems an absurd suggestion. Please pre present any evidence. I'd uh, be happy to, to look at it. But um, it, it, This evidence, by the way, involves a particular counsellor. So I'm not going to name him. Well, Chair, it doesn't seem will, fair to speculate on things we can't discuss then. Aren't, you just said, oh, Chair, because I think, I know Phil went to the Birkenhead Head meeting as well to ask, ask questions. Um, I think um, if there are questions, as I've just said, we will answer them. It seems very difficult to be, for people to stand up and say, you won't answer any questions. Well, if you don't ask them, they can't be answered. I'll answer so, questions. Let's, let's take another um, question from the floor. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Matthew, Matthew Parfit is Councillor of Parochialism and Engagement, as we all know. Yes, he refuses to meet with members of Defend Our Greenbelt Movement, our members of the Hoyleck Society, who have offered viable alternatives to a golf course without causing pollution, flooding, unspeakable disruption to our beautiful, what remains of our beautiful Greenbelt. Will you not agree with me? that the borrowing of £26 million pounds is totally unacceptable when there are so much want and poverty within our communities, when people of New Ferry are left alone and devastated in the aftermath of the explosion <coughs> in their midst, while our leader is offering them 
Pi is the sky fantasies totally divorced from reality of the world they live in. Um, so, I'm, in, in, in response, there's a question I can answer. As far as I'm aware, I've not refused to meet with anybody asking for a direct request for a meeting. Um, but I'm, uh, so, so I will stay now. If someone, if someone has any questions about anything, um, I would be happy to answer them. I, I know there, was, there are various groups that, that were mentioned. I couldn't write them all down. I know that um, I think I met with representatives, including yourself, Steph. Um, of uh, people against the Hoyle Golf Resort, including Phil, who's been speaking as well. Um, so it seems quite bizarre. We've just had two question, two points in a row made yeah. to say that I will not answer questions or engage when both of those people have been at meetings that I have arranged and organised in which I answered questions and engaged. So might I request that we have a better tone here and rather than point and pointedly make accusations which are foundationless, can we ask questions? I think people actually have very real questions and concerns to ask, rather than making points, political points, I think that'll be fair, Chair? I think that'll be very fair. Let's yeah. try and ask questions about the facts at hand. And uh, the gentleman there has his hand up. Thank you, Chair. Good evening. Two questions. First one is, will the development of 160 houses be built before the golf resort? Yeah. Yes, yes, it will. That's the first question. And can we have a guarantee of that? Because it, it explains the financial viability of the whole blessed folly. The other question is two for you. I'm sorry, Matthew. That's okay, then, boys. The other question is, oh, and I'll, then I'll sit down it's and the quiet, question question the time, it? <laughs> All of this is very interesting. There's one. That, sorry. Yes, the Q&A, yeah. Right. But there's one sentence in it that says the planning authority will have final decision on the whole stupid affair. Yes, they will. Now, that yes, will. is a nonsense because the council must be aware, and I'll finish in a minute, the council must be aware, unless there is a political deal, the council must be aware of the dramatic offence that this Stupidity is causing. Yeah. 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 I may be wrong, but I think that the planning authority does have to decide whether something can be built or not. So you've answered questions. No, um, I'm sorry, answer I'm sorry question. that was not what I said. I said they would have a final decision on the rightness of the development. That is not the same. We have a right to decide what is right. <laughs> for the green belt in the world. So, Chair, to answer those two questions, sorry, because no, no, they were directed at me, I was happy to answer them, but yeah. I'm, I'm conscious if David's got a question or a point to make, I'm happy to take As it. As a former chairman of the planning committee, a long-standing member of the planning committee at the present time, the planning committee will decide based on the evidence presented to it by planning officers. They will then either adjudicate the development as being approved with conditions or refused for cogent planning reasons, and they have to be for planning reasons. This is nothing whatsoever to do with the council's wish or otherwise to develop the development. This is a totally separate statutory body which is required to make decisions based purely on relevant planning law. It cannot be leaned on, and as far as I'm concerned, it will not be leaned on by the Labour administration or any other administration who wishes to go ahead with it. The decision will be made by the planning committee, as was happened, as happened, as you will recall, with the fire station at Sogol Massey. That was turned down on the first occasion, on my move to have it turned down. It was approved the second time round because an awful lot of the problems that were associated with it had been overcome. The problem we then have, if planning permission is granted by the Wirral Planning Authority, it might have to be called in by central government to make a decision on whether it is a true and proper solution for that particular site. That call-in would go to the Secretary of State who would eventually make the final decision. But make no bones about it, the planning committee will not be leaned on by the authority of the council itself. And I'm sure Patrick and Phil would both confirm that that is the case. I've been on the planning committee long enough to know I've turned 
applications down which I do not believe are proper, even those made by the Royal Council themselves, and I will continue to exercise that authority and that attitude towards any development anywhere in the borough that I do not believe is appropriate. Can I have your endorsement of that, uh, Matthew? With the exception of the name you got wrong of myself, yeah, it's Matthew, but <laughs> entirely, <laughs> you know, entirely, David, I uh, completely support what you said, and I know that the planning um, committee is independent and has, will always have an independent um, decision-making. Thank you. Okay, thank you. There's um, somebody right at the back wearing a cap. Yes. Um, I just wanted to say that the figures on the clause 12 are incorrect. They're three years old. Where 2015. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? The online petition now is grows to nearly 5,000 and uh, in part of the Green House uh, three th over 3,000 emails a day and only 300 and odd four. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is, can we make people aware this is a venture capitalist group yeah. Yeah. and yeah. I'm really disappointed with Labour cozying up to a venture capitalist group that has no money. Yeah. They will use our money. They will take our money. And when you put Oxford down to do this, ask them. At the meeting in Hoylake, Phil Davis promised us on camera that he would give us details of this venture capitalist group, right? And we've had none yet. So that's what we're waiting for. And the thing is, what, what, why haven't we had these details after what's happened in Clonethley? where they built the houses but not the golf course. So they do it in three stanchions. It's like this, buy a template from Jack Nicholas. anyone can do that, form a company, and use that as your heading. Exactly. And what yeah. you do, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is what venture capitalists do. And when, I, when you see venture capitalists, and you see a lot of people here, and I saw Phil Davis and his partner at the community centre, venture capitalists will eat them alive. You know, you're up against guys from the States, you know, got one of them in Florida. They have no money, by the way. They have £500 on their company's register. They will use our money. And a zero credit rate in here. Except they will, you've got a guarantee. You've got to give us details of this company. That's what we asked for. We have none whatsoever. And I talk about jobs, right? I think you just made your speech, Ron. No, no, just, no, just, just to be very short. Very 20, short. 20 years ago, Hamilton Oil, out in the bay there, flaring away tonight, promised us in Hoylake jobs. They brought this massive trailer onto Market Street. Oh, trouble, massive. <laughs> Don't worry, there'll be no pollution and you'll get loads of jobs. How many jobs came to Hoylake? None. None. That's all I wish to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, there are questions that have been notified in advance that aren't about the Gulf Resort, and I don't want those people to feel that we're ignoring their views as well. So, is there somebody who wanted to ask something different? So. Right, my name's Ken Roberts, I'm from Heron Road, but what I've got to say is not about traffic on Heron Road. Okay. We've got a market gardener who has arsonistic tendencies and insists on letting 